Thank you. Hello? Good morning. I am Georgina Lewis with Shazam Media. Thank you for having me today. I'm going to talk to you about reoccurring revenue. Um, I have the slides up here at our website if you want to pull them down. There's some other little goodies that we're going to be talking about at that site that you can pull down during this session. I'm going to be talking pretty quickly. So um, let me tell you a little bit about myself first. I graduated college in three years with two degrees from Wesleyan College All Women's College and computers and business. I went to work for IBM Bar Business, which then within a year from that, I bought that business out. 14 years later, we, I sold that multi-million dollar business and the majority of the revenue was reoccurring revenue. Now in the IBM world, reoccurring revenue was licenses that we sold and then we could lock down the computer and they had to pay us for an annual renewal of that license. It's a little different from WordPress type environment. In 2008, our oldest daughter um, was number three pro golfer in the world, so she turned professional. And I thought I'd retire, sold my business, and wanted to be a caddy. So that worked for like 12 months until I realized I don't like her being my boss and complaining that I need to walk faster and I need to get to the ball before her and I need to have the yardage done. So I retired, we hired a real caddy for the pro tour and I became her agent, which I liked a lot better. <laughs> During this time, a lot of people that I knew in golf, Golf Magazine, Sports Illustrated, um, a lot of the top 100 golf instructors in the world, which is 20,000 of them, they all vote in the top 133 of those are now our clients today. And they came to us to help us build their brand. So today, uh, what I do with Shazam Media is I'm a social media ecosystem strategist. And basically I help companies fortify their brands on the internet, which I love to do. And I'm empowered to do that because of our reoccurring revenue that comes into the company. So I make money while I sleep and I get to choose what I like to do out of the plethora of offerings that we have. So in 2009, 2010, I, um, my husband, who never worked with me before in the IBM business, partnered with me and we started a website design business. We started small, we picked WordPress, and we started using premium themes and we hired contractors to do custom work for us. Even though I know six programming languages, I didn't want to really go out there and learn Java and build themes. So what we're going to talk about today is ways that our company makes money. And it's a little different than what a lot of people do in the WordPress world. And what I'd like to challenge you to do is think about how can you take that model and maybe think outside the box and add some base revenue to your current revenue stream. So that's why you should focus on reoccurring revenue, okay? Why reoccurring revenue can help you is because it's profitable and it's sustainable. So if you give a good product to your clients, you will hold on to that client for a very long time. We have um, something like a 95% retention rate and a lot of people that we do lose is because they either went out of business or they, you know, we help them find a better uh, WordPress provider somewhere else. And that's what I learned from coming to WordCamp was how to help your problem clients find a better uh, consultant. <laughs> so there's a lot of ways to learn and uh, do reoccurring revenue. I'm going to touch on the three main sectors. And you're just going to have to figure out what sector is the best for you. Now, I'm not talking about reoccurring revenue is not you selling a package of your services that you have to perform somewhere in the future and getting the revenue today. Reoccurring revenue is you selling something that you don't have to do anything for every month for the next four years, unless you choose. Okay? Before you pick one of these options, you need to research and you need to plan. You need to figure out what your competitors are doing. 
So no matter what we do at Shazam Media, whether it's helping a customer brand themselves or we pick on a new topic ourselves or an offering, we research. We want to know how profitable and how much energy we have to put into doing that and how you know we're going to win. So how are we going to do that and do that well? First thing I'm going to talk about is subscription and membership-based revenue. Okay? Here's some examples. Magazine websites, newsletter websites, forum websites, free and paid content websites. And we often build these for our clients. Well, <clears throat> if a client comes to me and they say, you know, I really want to, these are all premium offerings that we at Shazam offer to our clients. So we have base price for, that's fixed, and it's been the same price for three years for our website solutions because we're in a growth model. So I should tell you that we are not an agency that wants 50 clients that we charge 25 to 50,000 a year for. We are an agency that wants, which we have 150 clients that we have on hosting that pay us about $1,000 or more a month, a year. So that's $150,000 we know is coming in and that's our base that we can then take December off if we want. You know, but that's our sustainable income, and we would rather sell good quality volume sites as our base that empowers us to do all the other a la carte services. So we have a lot of, we've divided up our solutions into base products, and then if we do a LinkedIn offering or we do um, Facebook solutions, those are a la carte. Okay? So magazine and newsletter sites, right? Typically, those are sites that are put up and people pay for ad space to be on those sites. Most of the content is free. Foreign-based websites are where people come together, answer questions for the general public, and if it's a good topic and it's been SEO'd properly, you should get a lot of hits off your forum website, but you've got to have two or three administrators, moderators, to answer those questions. And part of that content can be free and part of that can be paid. So we have an example of that in My Golf Pros. We found that several of those top 100 teachers, they want to um, come together and they're very philanthropic. Golf is a very philanthropic industry, probably the number one philanthropic industry in the nation. And so they're donating their time to answer questions and the cost of the website is covered by the paid content membership portion of those forums, but there's something like 7,000 topics in that forum that's being supported by 10 different golf pros at any one time. Free and paid content sites. You know, that's a, that's a great uh, way to get revenue. And it's a great way, if you don't get revenue through paid content, you can at least capture the name, put them in a newsletter use something like MailChimp or Constant Contact and upsell them every month on, you know, information that's coming out and things that are being offered and that type of thing. We have a client that had us build a website called um, JuniorGolfRanking.org and they are the worldwide junior ranking site. And everything is free except your child's lowest level results and how you got a thousand points but Joe Smith got 1,500. You have to pay to get to that lowest level. So you get to see your child's, oh, rank number eight. And believe me, if you don't know this term of helicopter parents, and you can figure out how to tap into helicopter parents, there's a lot of revenue in that kind of a website. So we have these obsessed parents go on. They want to know why they're not ranked higher. They try to figure out the math behind that. When they get to the lowest level, they have to pay or join to get to that level. Okay, but those are some examples. Um, I have resources for you. So if you choose to go down a subscription, magazine, paid content type of a website for yourself or for one of your customers, there are three different resources you could go look at. Makota does a really good article about profitable subscription-based websites. In their article, I think they give you something like seven different examples 
of types of subscription-based websites. One of my favorite things, which I subscribe to every Monday morning, is my quiet time in my pajamas, sitting at my computer, and I read. And Ink.com has an online subscription that helps me think about branding, growing my business, what's going on in social media, in marketing, all of those great topics. And there was a gentleman who went and spoke at the GROW conference, if you all heard of the GROW conference, and he talked about how subscription-based companies are the wave of the future. He happens to, you can go to this link that I have in the slideshow when you download it, and it will take you to the Inc. Magazine article and from there, he just published a book called The Automatic Customer. So it's talking about customers that sign up for a subscription. There's all these statistics about people who don't want to cancel their subscription because they're afraid if they sign up today, it won't be as cheap as when they got it. There's a huge retention of that income. And he talks about those types of businesses. I mean, it's so basic. It's like the um, we've all gotten those brochures in the mail where they want you to sign up for fruit every month being shipped out to you because now you've, you're like, I, I even think that's cool. And I have orange trees and grapefruit trees in my yard, but I'm like, oh, that's cool. I want to sign up for that because I feel like I'm getting something every month. I bought it for myself. Was, you know, I think my husband's listening in Australia right now because he forgets to buy cool things for me, so I just buy them for myself. But <laughs> um, marketing experiments. This link is really, really interesting. If you go to that link, they actually did some statistics about monthly subscription price points, quarterly, semi-annually, and annually, and what your retention is of certain client, clients at certain price points. So I really found that intriguing, but I do all this research. So we do research on everything, and I'm about to tell you about our hosting next. Now, okay. Love subscription-based websites. Our first year, I listened to someone talk, and I was like, oh, that's going to be so cool. I want to do that. And we did that. We have two websites out there that drive subscription-based websites uh, revenue for us. We spend a lot of time getting a hold of other people to make sure they're answering questions or providing fresh content for that. And at the end of the second year, I realized that we're just breaking even. When we talk about the time that we're spending versus a uh, subscription at $19.95 a month, and then it goes through PayPal for us. That vendor didn't have, or that customer didn't have an updated credit card, so then it expired on us, and we're always chasing, you know, that revenue to get them to re-sign. So there had to be a better way to do this. So in 2010, we said, you know what, let's start building really good solutions out there, and let's focus on hosting. And let's provide hosting to our customers. I think one of the, you know, um, sad things about this industry with freelancers is everyone's going after the big sale for today and the work and the revenue they need today. And they'll just stick their client on a shared server somewhere. And that's fine, but that solution that they provided is now hackable, right? And not having a premium server is hurting their SEO. So we realized that if we provided a really good hosting to our clients, we put them on a, pre a premium server, we figured out the load that we could have on that server for our X number of clients without having a bandwidth or speed issue, right? We control the uh, IP address, so we get more Google points, that's a Georgina phrase, right? We always want an A plus on the test. When I talk to customers, I talk about how many points we get for doing good things, and we want to get to you know, 90 to 100 points, so we get an A plus on our test, and Google put us on the first page. So we have to do that by taking all these little things into consideration. Well, what I found out was hosting is very competitive. And people always ask me, well, I can put it on Google for $9.99 a year. Well, yeah, you can, but how we differentiated ourselves was we packaged services and maintenance with our hosting. Now, at my website, so with the link I gave you, you can actually download, only because you're in this classroom today, I'm going to let you see our pricing for last year and the offerings that we do. It's locked down. You pull it down. The password is Shazam. 
And you can go in and you can see we have three levels of hosting that we offer. We have level one, level two, and level three. And a level one, it's $89 a month because we found out when we did some industry studies that our competitors were offering $89 a month for level one support. We figured out what their bandwidth was that they were offering, how many hits per month they were offering. WP Engine helps you out with that a lot because they charge you for different levels based on performance and hits. So that'll give you some baselines. But then we have to differentiate ourselves. You know, what is our value add, right? So in, in order to get really good ongoing service to our customer and revenue and retention, we have to have value add for our hosting. So the hosting with a premier server, that's one. Number two, we offer a basic package of support with every level. So in our level one, for example, we give you, Mr. Customer, a half an hour a month. Do you know we have over 140 websites around the world and only 10% call us every month? So it's a, it's a great upsell, it's a great value add that our clients are not utilizing because they're too busy. And we built them such a good website at a low price point that it's just, it just runs on cruise control. They don't need to update that website that often. Not only that, but we gave them the keys to their car. We let them in, we taught them how to do pages. We do not cha charge to change a page. Customers love to have that empowerment. Now we don't let them in the engine. You know, we don't let them go in and install new plugins or change the menu, things that are not recoverable. If it can be recovered, because you go to the bottom of a page or a post, you say recover this page, you can have access to it. But I've had a very big website that gets 50,000 hits a month call me up because they had an intern go in and change a menu option. And guess what? When you delete a menu by accident, you can't recover it. And they're updating that website so much, I couldn't restore it from the day before. So we had to go to Web Archive. And Chris, I know you're listening. I know this was you that had to go <laughs> do this. But we had to go back to Web Archive, figure out what the menus were, and he had to recreate them man manually one at a time. That next day, our entire clients got blocked from menus. So are we going to charge our client to change a menu? Absolutely not. But they get 30 minutes free of maintenance. So they send us a little ticket. At that time, we were with HostGator, so we got a product called WHMCS to manage our clients. Great tool. Um, it interfaces with subscriptions through PayPal, so I can send them an invoice through that. It collects the subscription. It puts all my subscriptions on the first of the month, so I get all my money on the first of the month of every month for my clients. And we're able to track our request. Our clients can even go in the middle of the night and enter a request for their 30 minutes on their own. Again, reducing our management time. And they wake up the next day, it's done. Okay, so figure out a way that you can add a value add. The other thing that we did is we went to a lot of word camps and Syed with Option Monster a couple years ago in Orlando, anyone who was at the conference, he offered unlimited licenses for Option Monster. Well, we spent the money and we bought that. So now, if our clients sign up with us at a level two or a level three, which is 189 last year, or I don't know, 225, you'd have to look at my sheet, um, they got that software included on our servers and that license for free. Because it didn't cost us anything more, we'd already pre-purchased that package, uh, and it was a great offering. So when you hear about those kinds of things, invest in them, and make that a differentiator of yourself against your competitor, okay? This is like the key, I think, is figuring out what can you do to offer to your clients and it's gonna come in like clockwork and you don't have to do anything for that additional revenue. Now we do, we do a lot. Now I will tell you this, in December of every year, our kids are out of school, we have four of them, well, if you count my two 91-year-old grandparents, that's six. And then you add my husband. We have seven kids. Um, 
and it's really hectic in our house at Christmas. So I don't want to build websites in December. We do not build websites. What we do is we send out a newsletter to all our clients and we tell them, this month we're going to come through and clean up all your spam. We're going to lock down all your passwords. We're going to, and they love it. They love that some mechanic showed up and maintenance their car and they didn't have to call us. You know? Okay. My third reoccurring revenue idea for this presentation is ad placement. Now everyone's heard of ad placement, but I'm gonna give you a spin on it a little differently. Okay, think outside the box. We all have clients come to us and say, you know, I really wanna do this, but I can't afford this, and blah, 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 I need a discount. Well, you probably don't wanna call Chris Lewis and ask for that discount, because he's hard line, no, he has to build it, time is money, but what we, figure it out is that we go ahead, get a simple little agreement with our client, and we say, we will give you a discount, but we reserve the right to put an ad on your website that we can sell to one of our other clients. I don't need to sell my own marketing. I, we build six to 10 websites a month, and yesterday on my drive here, this doesn't happen every day, but yesterday on my drive here, I got three calls from three new prospects of my other clients and I turned one away because he didn't understand enough about his business. He was not ready for us. I can't brand him, I can't build a website if he doesn't know what he wants to target. Now he can go find a $599 website from somewhere else and get started and call me back in three years. But, you know, I've learned that mistake. And so, if a, I do have several clients that come to us and build a second and a third website because we've done so well and grown their business 33% with the first website, and then they want a discount, and I say, sure, I want the bottom of your website that I can sell, and it won't be to one of your competitors at any point in time, and I know certain clients of mine are going to be successful with those ideas, and I know those sites are going to get 25 to 100,000 hits, and when they do, that's when I sell that ad space to another one of my customers. They pay me because I own the spot, and I'm making money while I sleep. So that's a spin on advertisement that you may or may not have heard before, but we figured that was a great way for us to have future sales. Let's see. So why focus on reoccurring revenue? because you make money while you sleep. It's not money, not package services you have to perform in the future. It's not plugins that you have to support in the future and try to keep selling over and over and over again. It's not themes that you have to market and compete against someone else. Recurring revenue is sustainable. Sustainable income is dependable. That's it. Any questions? Any questions? Yeah. So, yeah, the question is how do we choose the service provider um, for our hosting? And we made mistakes. Let's start with that, okay? And uh, at the time, we didn't think it was a mistake but we learned. And so first we went with HostGator and Bluehost and did shared, shared server space and it was not smart. We didn't have the knowledge how to go to that next level until a couple websites got hacked. And then we're like, oh my gosh, that's not very smart. We stayed with those same companies and moved to you know, their premium servers as a reseller server. And the problem was about three or four years ago in our experience, EIG bought Bluehost and then they bought HostGator. And so when they bought Bluehost and we had a lot of downtime, we moved all our clients to HostGator. Nine months later, the EIG bought HostGator and they put all our clients back without our knowledge at the first set of servers. So we started attending WordCamps and we started talking and we also go to a lot of meetups with other WordPress users. And what we have discovered personally is that, um, Chris, I know you're listening, I'm going to get this wrong. Um, WP Engine is where our level two and level three clients are. You know, it's a, a more premium price. And then um, SiteGround 
I had a mind block there for a second. Site ground is where we put all our level one claims. And we know we have now, after a year, we're in year five, we have zero downtime. We have great support from them. They answer us real time. So those are the two server companies I would recommend that you do um, as a reseller. You're welcome. Anything else? Okay, thank you guys. <laughs>